So if you have found yourself either voluntarily or involuntarily single, and you're over the age of 50, you may have spent some large section of your last 30 years in a marriage that didn't work out. And it may be, as you're approaching your, you know, the autumn of your life, that you're concerned about all those years you may have wasted in a relationship that was ill-fated. So now, as you're out of that relationship, you may be, like me, learning how great life is. I mean, how wonderful it is not to have that heaviness of a bad marriage holding you down. But on the other side of it, you know what makes life great and tragic at the same time is time. We only have so much of it. So you've got to make the most of what you've got left, especially if you feel like you've wasted a lot of time in a bad marriage. So today I want to talk about your health span and your lifespan. So that is your morbidity and your mortality and how you can increase your lifespan and your health span so you can really get the most out of the time that you got left. Because I think in this case, the juice really is worth the squeeze, but you're gonna have to squeeze. So I've been studying health and fitness for more than 20 years, probably 22 or 23 years. I was originally certified as a personal trainer like back in 2002. Currently I'm certified with the American Council of Exercise as a health coach and with the American College of Sports Medicine as a personal trainer. And I have more certificates and things like that than I can, I can even tell you about. I have worked with hundreds of people over the last seven years, eight years, on various things, whether it be weight loss, disease management, um, you know, just general fitness, anything you can imagine, I've helped people with it. And today I want to talk about some simple things that you can do that will make an enormous difference in your health and your life and help you add some really great years to the time you have left. So the problem we have in America for better or worse, is that we have free speech. And it's not just you and I that have free speech, it is large multinational corporations that also have free speech. And these corporations have a vested interest in what you eat, and they will tell you that what you're eating is healthy. Now obviously, when you're at the store and you see packaged foods marked with some kind of health benefit across the front, like low fat or low carb or whatever, it doesn't matter, you think, oh, that must be good. Yeah, it's not. It's just a processed food. Um, in addition, these multinational corporations do a very good job of not only um, packaging and advertising their products in, manner, in a manner that suggests that they have health benefits when they really don't, but they will also um, support overall dietary patterns through the use of social media, social media influencers, um, television, um, They'll even pay off uh, you know, doctors and scientists and people like that to, to join in on it. So there's a lot of money involved in promoting different types of eating patterns. And confirmation bias is the best way to get clicks. So if I tell you that eating lots of pizza and ice cream is gonna help you live longer and lose weight, you're gonna subscribe to my channel because that's gonna make you feel good. It's like, yeah, I love pizza and ice cream and I know that John told me because he's a doctor or an expert or whatever you know I'm not a doctor but this is suggesting you know hypothetically that um, I'm gonna push out my my pizza ice cream diet and I'm gonna get a million followers and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up some people who just eat pizza and ice cream and I'm gonna show that they lost weight and that 
their uh, health numbers got better and you guys are going to be all on board and you guys are going to all start eating pizza and ice cream. Well, unfortunately, many of you are going to die. And the wonderful thing about you passing away is that you won't be there to debunk my pizza and ice cream diet because you're not there anymore. Maybe um, as a rich and powerful media mogul who's now being supported by the pizza and ice cream industries, I can suppress a lot of the negative press that's going to come from all these pizza and ice cream dietary deaths. Do you see what I mean? So my point is real scientists, for the most part, do not show up on social media. If you see a doctor who spends a lot of time on YouTube or on Instagram, they're not doing a lot of doctoring. You know what I mean? If you see someone who says, oh, they're a, uh, a scientist and you see them with a YouTube channel, they're not doing a lot of science. Do you know what I mean? Like they are making a living from clicks. They're making a living from views. They want your eyeballs and they're going to say whatever they have to to get your eyeballs. I can tell you from what I have observed, there is an enormous amount of misinformation online about diet and exercise. So what I'm going to give you today is just the raw, like it or not, real life experience that I've had over the last 20 plus years. I've written a couple books on this. I have helped hundreds of people, you know, in my, my um, health coaching practice and as a personal trainer. And prior to that, I probably spent another 10,000 hours in the gym on my own. So I would guess I have somewhere between, I don't know, 10 and 20,000 hours physically exercising and at least 10,000 hours helping people with their, uh, their diet and exercise program as a combination. And that's helping people with Alzheimer's disease, deal with cancer, heart disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity. I've seen it all and I've helped people in all of those disease patterns reverse their disease or at least uh, prevent it from getting worse. So take it for what it's worth. I am not going to be paid by anybody for this. I mean, obviously YouTube pays me for clicks, but I'm not, this is not one of those videos that I am thinking is going to drive up a lot of views. Here's the truth. Exercise will not help you lose weight. It will help you prevent gaining weight. So exercise is really great at helping you maintain a healthy weight once you've achieved it. It's not great at helping you lose weight. So all these exercise shows that have you doing, you know, um, you know, these high intensity workouts have very limited um, utility in real life. I love exercise, but not because it helps me lose weight. It does help a little bit, but it's not a significant factor. What exercise does is it improves your health. And don't over let that be a second, you know, um, or, or lower priority. Because if you intend to live and have a long health span, in other words, you don't need to be seeing a doctor every couple of months to get your prescriptions refilled for your high blood pressure or your diabetes or whatever, you definitely want to maintain your health. And if you're my age, I'm 59 or older, health is all you've got. In fact, I would suggest that health should be your number one priority in life. Sure, you've got your family and your kids and all that, but you're going to be useless to them if you're not healthy. So health should be your top priority. And exercise is the most impactful thing that you can do to improve your health. Now, what kind of exercise? You don't need to go crazy. You do need to get, uh, you need to have an active lifestyle. And that would include walking, some jogging, um, lifting weights. How much? I would suggest that you need to get at least an hour a day. And I know that sounds like a lot, but if you just break it down throughout the course of the day, it's not that bad. I mean, you have to go to the bathroom, you wipe your ass, you brush your teeth, you take a shower. There's lots of stuff you do for body maintenance during the course of a day. So just make exercise one of those things. You will not regret it. So here's a basic exercise routine that you can implement on a weekly basis. On most days of the week, you should get out for two 30 minute walks at a res reasonably brisk pace. In other words, it's like you're running a little bit late for a plane and you're just going to walk with some intention. You cannot just be strolling. Strolling is not going to get you where you want to go. You're going to have to walk with some intention. Um, generally speaking, I would say three miles an hour 
is a good minimum pace. Three plus miles an hour is ideal. Now, if you're walking in rough terrain like here where you've got all these rocks and things, it may be tough to maintain that kind of speed. But the rough terrain actually adds an additional challenge to your body and it's, it, it changes it. But if you're walking on a flat surface, say around your neighborhood, around the street, yeah, three miles an hour is where you need to be. Twice a day, 30 minutes each. Um, if you have to get it all in in a single hour, that's okay too. But increasing the frequency of your walks actually has a, a, a bigger impact than just having one single walk during the course of the day. If you can get in three 20 minute walks, that's great too. That, that absolutely is great. Um, if you want to run or jog, you can probably reduce your time. You know, I think that um, if you were to get a, uh, say, a two or three mile run in um, a few times a week, that certainly makes a big difference. Uh, you should be shooting for, you know, 10 minute miles at the very least so that you're, you're maintaining a pretty decent pace. Um, when it comes to weight training, it doesn't have to, you don't have to go overboard with this. You really just need to have a minimum of three exercises in each routine and you should probably hit those three exercises twice but ideally three times a week. One lower body exercise and that would be like squats, deadlifts, leg presses if you have an access to them, um, lunges, um, split squats, something that challenges your legs in a significant way. That would be the lower body exercise. Leg extensions, leg curls are okay if you have to go that route. They're not ideal because they only involve very isolated muscle groups, but they're still fine if that's what you have to do. Um, one upper body pressing movement and one upper body pulling movement. So um, upper body pressing movement would be like a bench press or an overhead press, and a pulling movement would be like a row or a pull down or a pull up. That's it, that's it. That's all you need to do three times a week. Mix them up so that you're not hitting the same muscle groups every single time. Aim for three to five sets per exercise per day. So without getting too complicated, you want to exercise with enough intensity that by the time you reach the end of each set, each exercise when you perform it, is you want to feel significantly fatigued within two or three repetitions of absolute failure. If you can reach that point consistently, you're going to not only maintain muscle mass, but you're going to grow muscle mass. As you become more advanced, you can push yourself more um, closely to absolute failure with each exercise. Now, getting to absolute failure with big lower body exercises is not advisable. So I don't advise you trying to fail on a, you know, a barbell back squat. That's, I don't, I don't do that, you know, but maybe on a leg extension, you could do that. Maybe on, um, you know, like a, a, a split squat, like a Bulgarian split squat or a lunge, you could push yourself really close to that point. Um, but with squats and deadlifts, eh, failure's asking a lot. That's, that's really pushing your body and your joints very, very hard, and I would not recommend that at all. Um, abdominal exercises are something you can certainly throw in. You know, people like to do a lot of leg lifts and stuff like that, and they're not very effective because you're working your, um, uh, your hip extenders. What you really want to do is some kind of a crunch, and if you can do that crunch on an incline, that's even better. So let me just recap that. You want to walk every day, a couple times a day, 30 minutes each. And you want to um, do three times a week with some kind of weight training. You're going to use three exercises, one lower body, one upper body pushing, one upper body pulling. And um, you're going to do three to five sets per exercise. The first set oftentimes can be a warm-up set. The second one, you can think of it as a primer. You're going to get really close to failure. And on that last one, you're going to push yourself even closer to failure. You want to work with a full range of motion. Do not do partials, that's not effective. Um, you want to work around any joint injuries that you have, like a lot of guys at our age have bad shoulders, so maybe um, overhead presses are not as good for you. Um, dumbbells tend to be a safer um, uh, implement than barbells. Um, barbells put your hands into a pronated position all the time, and it's more likely you're going to cause torque on your, your joints with that, that straight bar. So I would definitely recommend um, dumbbells because they allow you more freedom to hold the, your wrists in a direction that is comfortable for you. Um, um, bent over rows, if you're gonna go that route, I would start off with a one arm row with your hands supported on a bench so that you're not uh, putting a lot of undue stress on your back. Um, if you can do bent over barbell rows, 
that's, that's okay. Cable rows are excellent. Um, pull downs, um, use the uh, neutral grip, narrow neutral grip rather than the wide bar. Wide bar, you're gonna feel it more in your rear delts. The neutral grip, you're gonna feel it more in your lats. That's where you need to feel it. I'm gonna do a whole video on this and I'm gonna post it in the member section sometime in the next couple of days so you can see a basic routine of what I'm talking about. Um, when it comes to diet, so here's the one that's really controversial because diet is like religion. People just believe that their diet is the right diet. And I have worked with people and I have used just about every diet you can imagine. I have done carnivore, I have done uh, vegan, I have done um, ketogenic, I have done them all. And I have recommended them to my clients and I have um, tracked their progress on these different diets for the last seven or eight years. And I can tell you without doubt, without questioning this at all, there's tons of science to back it up, that a ketogenic diet will provide you with a short-term benefit and a long-term problem, a huge long-term problem. The top three causes of death in the United States are heart disease, cancer, and then getting treatment from your doctor or taking medications as prescribed. Those are the top three. Now the third one, you won't find in many of the charts on the National Institutes of Health. The third one is a, a secret that the doctors and the hospitals try to keep from you, but indeed, getting treatment for those first two is very likely to lead to the third one. So if, if you can avoid getting treatment from a doctor or having to take a prescription for any reason at all, you're gonna reduce your chances of dying or becoming very, very ill by a lot. Um, heart disease, um, there's a lot of controversy because the meat industry and the, the big ag, they have a lot at stake when it comes to the way we eat. And they will do everything in their power to prevent any negative information coming out and being widely distributed about eating saturated fat, high fat diets, meat, dairy, um, eggs. And they spend millions and millions of dollars every year promoting really, really bad science. There is only one metric that matters when it comes to diet, only one, and that is who's living the longest, period. That's it. There are no populations in the world who eat solely a meat diet that are long lived. There are no populations in the world who eat a high fat diet, like a ketogenic diet, that are long lived. The only diet that has been shown to extend people's lives are diets that are very high in fruits and vegetables, grains, and um, very low in saturated fat, meat, and dairy, and eggs. Now, that doesn't mean you've got to get rid of all those other foods, you know, but just eat them more, more sparingly. You know, I certainly enjoy um, having a piece of fish from time to time, but I don't make it a regular thing. I eat a lot of beans, a lot of greens, a lot of grains, and I've been doing that now for about the last, I don't know, a year and a half. And when I first went on that diet, I lost 20 pounds and I saw my body fat go from about 22% down to 12% over the course of, I guess, three months. And I have never seen anything like it. I, I was exercising, but not a whole lot more than what I would normally exercise. And I, um, yeah, it was miraculous how much weight I lost. Now, in contrast to that, for several years, I was a big promoter of the ketogenic diet. And I put a lot of my clients on ketogenic diets and I would measure them and weigh them. And what I saw was that they would see initial benefits where they would lose some weight and they would see um, some improvements in some of their health markers. But then inevitably, those health markers would go back in the other direction. They'd become di more diabetic. They would become um, higher body, body fat and their cholesterol levels would go back up. So in the short term, the ketogenic diet does seem to have a benefit. But here's why I think it works on a short term. is because all these diets require that you eat nothing but whole foods. So you get rid of the highly processed um, packaged foods and you're gonna see a benefit no matter what. So you could go from eating you know, macaroni and cheese out of a box along with potato chips and you know, the typical you know, fast food diet that Americans typically eat and you know, almost anything is gonna be better than that. Like that is just purely toxic food. So if you just eat anything other than that, just any whole food, you could eat nothing but red meat all the time 
and it would be better than that. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's what people see in the initial um, transition to uh, you know, out of the standard American diet. And when it comes to eating, you know, like a carnivore diet, because I know that's really, really popular these days. Well, even the original promoters of the carnivore diet, I remember that doctor, I can't, I can't remember his name, but he, he wrote books on it. He even gave it up because it made him sick. He became very, very sick from eating a carnivore diet. It doesn't have the nutrients that you need. Your body, you see all these green leaves around here and how they turn yellow and red as the fall happens? Green has all those colors in it. So when you eat like spinach or kale or, you know, whatever, you know, green leafy vegetables, it already has the yellows and the reds contained in the green. So as these green leaves begin to lose their, the chlorophyll because of the change in the, in the climate, the weather, um, you start to, they expose the yellows and the reds. Well, those yellows and reds are extremely healthy, just like the greens are. Well, the greens contain the yellows and the reds. Anyway, getting lots of leafy green vegetables in your diet is critically, critically important. Getting lots of fiber in your diet is critically important. The um, average American only gets about 15 grams of fiber per day, actually less than 15 grams of fiber per day. 30 grams is what the USDA recommends, and it's a lot of evidence to suggest that our um, ancient ancestors were eating over 100 grams a day. And when you look at the um, current uh, hunter-gatherers who have never changed their diet going back, you know, for, you know, hundreds of generations, they're getting close to 100 grams of fiber a day. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. When you can get your fiber up to 40, 50, 60 grams a day, uh, your colon's going to thank you, but you're going to lose weight, you're going to feel more satisfied, you're going to be healthier, your brain's going to work better. I'm telling you, it makes an enormous difference, and you're going to live longer, and that's the bottom line. At this point, you just want to extend your life. And the best way to do that is to clean up your diet and start moving on a regular basis. Do not become a couch potato. Because if you're going to sit on that couch, you're going to die on that couch. So here's the takeaway from today after my rant is you've already been through a shitstorm with your divorce, you know, and you've wasted I don't want to say wasted, but you spent 10, 20, 30 years dedicating your life to a, a life that wasn't working, to a marriage that wasn't working, and now you've got a time in your own life to have some control and to live the life that you really, really want to live. And unfortunately, the time is running out. You know, Father Time waits for no one. You do have a little bit of control, though, and that is if you can increase your health span, you will inevitably increase your lifespan. You do not want to spend these years sick, and you do not want to see your life end suddenly and unexpectedly because you haven't been taking care of yourself. And the old adage about use it or lose it is absolutely the truth. Your body is an amazing machine, but it will only support the systems that you need. And you show that you need these systems by using them. So when you get up and you move and you use your muscles and you build strength and you walk and your cardiovascular system will improve and your muscular system will improve and you will be healthier and you'll be stronger and you will live longer and you'll be less likely to um, spend a lot of time at the hospital or with your doctors. And I guess at the end of the day, it would really suck to go through all this shit and finally get your life back and finally be a whole man. Jack's quit it. No, no, get down, go and finally be a whole man and, uh, and then die. God, that would suck. That would suck. So don't do that to yourself. Get yourself healthy. Get yourself active. Eat the right food. You don't need to be eating all that shit anyway. I mean, you can do it from time to time, but yeah, it should not be a regular part of your life. Eat more beans, greens, grains. Um, you know, go easy on the saturated fat and the red meat. You all know this is true, you know? Don't eat that highly processed crap. Um, the, uh, add a lot of variety into your diet, lots of fruits, you know, it's going to make a big difference. It really is. Get that fiber up as high as you can get it. And, um, yeah, your colon will appreciate it. You know, I'm telling you, man, there's nothing like having a colon cleaner every morning. Nothing like it. You start the day off fresh and I'm telling you, it's like you lost five pounds. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got for you today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like, and subscribe. And if you can, well, first of all, stay healthy. And if you can, stay single.